Julia Julia wins now back in. Kill Zarbach. Nice wow. spike. Zarbach is on fire at the moment. Zarbach really looks like she knows what she has to do to be a winner. Hi, this is Morgan Smart from Lakeland's volleyball team. Please come out and support us on Wednesday, October 18th, as we play Lorraine Community College at 6 p.m. For more information on Lakeland Athletics, visit athletics.lakelandcc.edu. And go Lakers! Thinking of getting engaged? Tired of mall shopping where all the jewelry looks alike? Cameo Jewelers is the store to shop for beautiful, unique diamond engagement rings, silver fashion, and Disney jewelry. Why shop online when you can get the same pricing and better quality at Cameo Jewelers? Two store locations, Menor and Chardon. Menor store liquidation, 50% off Pandora. Remember the five C's when buying a diamond. Cut clarity, color, carrots, and Cameo. Bring in your Lakeland ID for a special discount. Check out our website, CameoJewelers.com. Facebook and Twitter. Here at Lux, we focus solely on hookah. We have an extremely knowledgeable staff and we always try to make all of our customers feel at home. This is where true hookah enthusiasts come to smoke. Our prices are reasonable and our service is outstanding. We are a hookah lounge in the purest sense of the word. A hookah lounge designed and staffed by hookah fans for hookah fanatics. To top it off, we always go above and beyond. We are meticulous in everything that we do. We make sure that your hookah experience is of the highest possible possible quality. If it doesn't taste right to us, then we won't serve it to you. Majority of our customers turn into regulars and eventually friends because we pride ourselves on our product and service. It's just that simple. We want you to enjoy yourself and expect you to leave happy. If you want the best hookah experience, you come to Lux. Located at 37939 Vine Street, Willow By. We invite you to come experience the flavor and see what you've been missing. We hope to see you soon. Check us out at twitter.com backslash Lake Effect Radio for upcoming events, interviews, and much, much more. I enrolled at Lakeland because I wanted to get ahead. And today, you need college. And Lakeland is close by and tuition is low. It's convenient with classes day, night, weekends, and online. You can't beat it. And here's the best part. You'll save thousands of dollars and not rack up a lot of debt. My Lakeland credit's transferred, and now I'm working on my bachelor's. So take it from me. I'm from Lake County. Opportunity starts here at Lakeland. Lakeland's campus is now protected by Lakeland Safe. With this app, safety is in your hands. You can directly connect to the campus police for safety. Send texts, photos, or video of security concerns on campus. Receive campus safety alerts directly to you. And do your part to help keep our campus safe. Get it on Google Play or the App Store. Interviewing workshop. Learn what to say and what not to say and how to say it. So they say you're hired. Tuesday, October 17th, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. To register, go to careers.lakelandcc.edu to register. And stolen by Mike Davis. Davis gives to Goodwin. Takes that. Puts up and in for two. for Lakeland's men's soccer team as they face Cuyahoga Community College Wednesday, October 11th at 4 p.m. Go Lakers! Thinking of getting engaged? Tired of mall shopping where all the jewelry looks alike? Cameo Jewelers is the store to shop for beautiful, unique diamond engagement rings, silver fashion, and Disney jewelry. Why shop online when you can get the same pricing and better quality at Cameo Jewelers? Two store locations, Menor and Chardon. Menor store liquidation, 50% off Pandora. Remember the five C's when buying a diamond. Cut clarity, color, carrots, and Cameo. Bring in your Lakeland ID for a special discount. Check out our website, CameoJewelers.com. Facebook and Twitter. Here at Lux, we focus solely on hookah. We have an extremely knowledgeable staff and we always try to make all of our customers feel at home. This is where true hookah enthusiasts come to smoke. Our prices are reasonable and our service is outstanding. We are a hookah lounge in the purest sense of the word. A hookah lounge designed and staffed by hookah fans for hookah fanatics. To top it off, we always go above and beyond. We are meticulous in everything that we do. From the hookah we use, to the hoses we provide, to the way we pack our bowls. 
we make sure that your hookah experience is of the highest possible quality. Our hookahs are cleaned after each use. When they begin to deteriorate, we replace them. Our hoses are replaced every three months and our flavors are always fresh. If it doesn't taste right to us, then we won't serve it to you. We only use the finest Exotica hookah charcoal. Majority of our customers turn into regulars and eventually friends because we pride ourselves on our product and service. If it does not meet your standards or doesn't work, we fix it. If you still have a problem with it, we replace it. It's just that simple. We want you to enjoy yourself and expect you to leave happy. If you want the best hookah experience, you come to Lux, located at 37939 Vine Street, Willow By. We invite you to come experience the flavor and see what you've been missing. We hope to see you soon. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the Adorable Deplorables. Matt good Bossman afternoon. along <laughs> along with Josh Walker. What's going on, Josh? Pretty good. So uh uh, today we're going to talk about, we have some breaking news for you. Uh, President Donald Trump clears the way for Obamacare alternatives in his new executive order going around the stalled Congress. Here's uh, the president with what he said earlier today about the executive order on the health care plan. We are moving toward lower costs and more options in the health care market and taking crucial steps towards saving the American people from the nightmare of Obamacare. Today is only the beginning. In the coming months, we plan to take new measures to provide our people with even more relief and more freedom. And by the way, on another subject, that will include massive tax cuts. We are going to get massive tax cuts, and I believe even Senator Rand Paul, and I know Virginia, Greg, I think you're with us, but the whole country is looking for these massive tax cuts, and we will get them. And we are going to also pressure Congress very strongly to finish the repeal and the replace of Obamacare once and for all. We will have great health care in our country. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. So the president talking about some of his uh, action that he's going to take against Obamacare in a repeal and replace. This will be the third attempt uh, for the Republican administration. But just getting into that a little bit, we don't know much about the plan itself. We do know that this is basically brand new, um, what's going on with health care. And it's been sort of a an uphill battle for the administration uh, since January 21st when they took office. You know, Josh, I really think that um, that's one of the main hurdles for the administration, looking at uh, just the entire Obama Obamacare catastrophe um, and how it's really, you know, just been something that people have been wanting to get right. I think it's less of the fact that it was at first, you know, we want to get rid of this and we'll repeal it and then replace it later. I think now it's more of we need to replace it and have that plan first before we talk about repealing it. What do you think? So my views on this whole thing is that um, I didn't like any of the proposals. I think they're all bad. I think government should stay out of health care. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see... You know, healthcare like car insurance, you can purchase it over state lines. Mm -hmm. Healthcare companies will be competing to get yeah. to get con consumers. You can have just a bone simple plan where you know, in a case of a tragedy, you will be covered. Or it's like flow, like pick your price gun. Um, there sh there should be um, laws in place that they can't discriminate against pre-existing conditions and things that would that in the past um, affected a lot of people. Worst case scenarios like bad things. Yeah, I think you know. That's the only time I think that the government can right. um, pitch right. in the thing. Right. Because the thing about, you know, universal health care or state health care is that... It's controlled. Yeah. And it's also, you know, any any third-party purchase. You know, every everything that the government buys is a third-party purchase. Right. And we all know the markup on third-party purchases. Right. Premiums have just been uh, terrible. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at just the premiums for people... I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was saying how his mother works for, uh, she's a counselor with uh, 
somewhere in Cleveland, I think for the St. Ignatius or St. Edward um, school system. And for people living in the house, basically he told me for the premiums to go down, everyone in her household, the four people that live in the household, would have to get in a car accident and they would all have to have similar injuries and would all have to be in the hospital for the same amount of time in order for premiums to decrease. And to me, that is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is, it's unbelievable. Now, at first, you can look at when Obamacare was passed, a lot of people, or the Affordable Care Act, whatever, Health Care Act, whatever you want to call it, um, it seems at first, when it was passed, that it was kind of like a lifesaver for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people saw hope. They saw this uh, chance now that they can go to the hospital whenever they feel like it for any reason at all. But that isn't the case for the people that actually, you know, have an income. Um, for the people that, you know, um, you know, healthcare to me isn't something you earn, it's something you're given. I do believe that it should be, you know, everyone should have it. I just think the way that they get it is the real issue here. It's not more of, well, you know, if you work, you should have health care. No, I don't believe that. But I also believe that you should have a choice to what you get, not being told what you can have. You know, not given the options, but the options are endless for you, Mm -hmm. Um, whether you pay for it yourself or not. And I think that's the real argument that, you know, the Republicans have with the Democrats right now is Democrats want, or it seems, even through passing Obamacare, it seems that they've wanted to shift it into the more, well, we're going to tell you what you can get. We're going to show you where you can get this care, um, at what point you can get this care, You know, whether whatever condition that you have, um, it's basically we're going to let you know what's good for you. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be that way. We see in other countries that they they ration off, you know, who who gets what. (laughs) It's unbelievable. You can you can wait in long lines for something that you need to be taken care of right now. Absolutely. And I looked at this is funny um, because I, I did not like this man at all. Ted Cruz. Um, he actually mentioned something to Congress about a pretty decent health care um, idea. And what it was, it was basically being similar to Australia. Australia, Australia, <laughs> Australia has the, you, basically it's kind of like Obamacare and basically what Trump wants to do mixed. So it's basically there's that basic plan that the government provides that they're going to give to you unless you want to go out into the market and choose something else. And that gives the companies, this, they still have the opportunity to compete, which I think is what a lot of healthcare companies want to do. They want to compete against each other to give the consumer the best plan. But what is the real argument here that we're having with healthcare? Why hasn't, hasn't it been passed yet by this administration? That was, you know, you look in the campaign and in Trump's campaign and you look at what he said about just... Everything was tax reform, immigration, and health care. The three main issues with our country that have become huge issues and probably the most important. Um, You know, he chose to go the route of the wall for immigration. He has this tax plan that I did a research paper on, and it's a really great tax plan. Um, It's not... You know, the trickle-down theory that everybody thinks it's going to be. It's a lot different. Um, Is that the one that your postcard-sized? What? Your postcard-sized tax? What do you mean? Um, I don't... I I don't... I'm not following you on that. Let's see if we have any uh, chat people this week. The adorable... That must... uh, Democrats today. No, nobody. No, I, I haven't looked at any of the uh, the tax uh, reform proposals or anything, but um, there was this one where, basically, it's like when you do your, you know, when you do your W two. Yeah. Well, this this new tax reform would be it's like, it's the size of a postcard. Okay. That's how little that you have to do, and that's oh simple okay. and basic that it yeah, is. Yes, very simple, very basic. You know, and I I just to me it's it's funny because I was talking about this with somebody yesterday, uh, we were discussing taxes, and I I was telling them you know. I'm paying two different taxes for two different cities right now. I live in one city and I work in another and I'm paying both. I don't want to pay both out of my paycheck. You know, I think that's really ridiculous. 
even though I work in the city that I work in and I live where I live, I want to pay where I live because that's where I'm usually at. That's where I'm at, you know, 80, 75, 80% of my life is there, you know, and just because I'm making money in a different city doesn't mean that it should be taken from me. You know, it's just like, you want me to get a job? Okay, but I don't want to pay the taxes in that city. I mean, I just don't find that fair to the worker, the average American worker. And it, it's, it goes beyond that. I mean, even just crazier things going on in taxes today. I mean, you look at, basically, I found in the Obama administration with the stimulus package, uh, the stimulus plan that the Democrats presented Obama was very heavily engaged in and you know that just skyrocketed taxes for us and it was just it was unbelievable you know it was sad that that was the result that was the solution that they had that that administration had when it came to taxes you know to me it's just it's upsetting that just so that people can and even this the stimulus package did go into effect, but it took years for things to get done. So I'm paying taxes, you know, out the rear end for a long extended period of time just so these workers can get paid. And I don't, I, I don't like that at all. That's why I don't vote for levies anymore, you know, because I don't want my taxes to be raised for school systems anymore. I mean, I agree that they should have good things, but that should not come from my pocket, you know. Yeah, I think a lot of the, um, you know, I think I think the, the schools do need to get reformed, and um, that's the that's the job of the state legislator. Yeah, yeah, that's and, the job of the state, absolutely. And when you talk about different municipalities <laughs> or or the states or the federal government and how they spend money, a lot of times you see waste. Yeah. But, oh yeah. But <laughs> oh yeah, they have all this money sitting in a little. Uh, it's like they have it sitting in a safe, and they don't open the safe ever. Oh, we just have the money. That's cool. Okay. What are you going to do with it? Eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What? A lot, a lot of times it's wasted. <laughs> That's like telling your best friend, hey, can I borrow 200 bucks? I want to go buy a, a, a microwave mm -hmm. for my new apartment. Okay. And then you go there and you're like, hey, can I use your microwave? I never bought it. Why? Well, because, you know, I don't know. I want to keep the money and save it. But that's not what I gave you the $200 for. I gave it so you could buy a microwave. No. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> That's just what the government does. And it's un believable um so to add on to that you know i pretty much we're all guilty of it if, if we see if we see government waste um you know we have township meetings we have city meetings right right we can go to the state legislator and testify but nobody does nobody 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 advocates. cares enough and then people talk about it mm -hmm. like they're politicians you know and it's it's just it's a shame that people don't educate themselves enough and that goes for anything in politics. People don't take the time to research. They just go off of what they're told mm -hmm. with the liberal media. And especially with the age of social media when you know, everybody's, everybody can post whatever they want and you, know, you just have a general assertion, but there's no, there's no you know, factual basis where you can go and research to see if that claim is true. It's really right. easy to see something posted that has thousands of likes, thousands of comments. And right. You, you you take that to be true, and it, it might it might not be. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just you know I I really think that it's got to be tax reform cannot be controlled. You know I, I just don't think that you know you give you give someone too much power they're going to abuse it, and that's the problem with you know the left. Is just they want the power, they want to lie to the people that really need the help. And those people give their trust to these people that don't have their best interests in, in mind. When passing bills, when doing, um, you know, certain, when talking about certain plans and projects, you know, it's just, it's a shame that people are just, they, they just aren't smart enough to understand what's going on and it's hurting them personally. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, hurting their bank account, hurting their families. Look at the war and poverty. How, how, you know, how much has poverty improved in the last 40 years? Right, right. Microscopically. Yeah. It should be on a huge pace of improvement, and it's not, and it's a shame. Uh, in other news, Harvey Weinstein uh, 
liberal man in Hollywood, has uh, it's come out that he's been very abusive to many different women, many different people. Um, it's alleged, of course, but it, it's probably true. <laughs> it's a pretty good 80 to 90 percent chance that things happened. And now, as a result of what's going on with Harvey Weinstein in Hollywood, uh, with his alleged abuse, sexual harassment charges, allegations, other stars are coming out and saying that they have been sexually harassed. And it will surprise you with who it is. It's like the whole Bill Crosby thing all over again. <laughs> yeah, Bill Cosby. An interesting individual. There has been... Now, a few stars have come out uh, today and talked about this. Let's go to what's going on right now. I just saw it on here, and I can't find it. That's great. <laughs> there was a star. Oh, it's on. It's over here. James Van Der Beek says he was sexually He says, and I quote, I was sexually harassed by Hollywood elites, too. Uh, alleged Weinstein victim Rose McGowan gets suspended from Twitter. Oh, what happened here? Getting suspended from Twitter. Yeah. Late night Wednesday, um, actress and alleged Harvey Weinstein sexual assault victim Rose McGowan said she had been suspended from Twitter posting a screenshot of the suspension on her Instagram account. You know, I, I just think the problem with this is what these stars are going to do and what it's very popular to do in today's society is just to immediately take whatever you're thinking about and post it on some social media platform. Without any re rel relative facts or support behind it. Right. But, I mean, I agree with this. You know, I agree with what these people are talking about. They were um, allegedly harassed by Weinstein. And, you know, it's just... I get it. It's that emotional buildup. It's that emotional feeling that they have at the time because now everything's coming to light with the person that they um, have been afraid of for so long and have been wanting to talk about. I just think this is going to get a lot worse than it is right now. You know, there's it, that's what happens with these um, these cases is that these people that are, you know, you look at what happened to Fox News. You look at what happened, um, you know, here. It's just going to get bigger. With Bill Cosby, it got bigger. More and more people came out. and It's only an issue when it gets bigger. When yeah. It's publicized. Yeah, when it gets publicized. And there's so many people out there that are now coming out to light to saying that this happens. Terry Crews, another one, says he was groped by a high executive, Hollywood executive, high level Hollywood executive, but he didn't take any action. He didn't say anything about it. And what's really crazy is that he was at a party, and I'll, I'll pull up the article. He was at a party, and a male Hollywood executive came up to him and, you know, inappropriately harassed him. And his wife was right next to him. Terry Crews' wife was right next to him. He said the guy, and I quote, stared at him and smiled as this occurred. And he just didn't say anything about it. Here's what he said. My wife and I were at Hollywood Function last year. A high-level Hollywood executive came over to him and... I'm not going to say the next part. Jumping in and harassed him. Jumping back, he said, what are you doing? His wife saw everything when she looked at him like he was crazy, and he grinned like a jerk and smiled. He said, I was going to kick his butt right then and there, but I, he said he thought twice about how the whole thing would appear. Um, he said he probably would have went to jail and if he would have done what he wanted to do. That night and the next day, he talked to everyone he knew that worked with him about what happened. He called the next day with an apology, but never really explained why he did what he did. You know, and it goes beyond an apology when it comes to things like this. You know, it's um, it, it brings me back to the Kobe Bryant case many years ago. Um, his uh, rape charges, uh, not his charges, but his allegations from one of uh, this one woman at a hotel with Kobe Bryant. And it was weird because the woman settled for I think it was $77,000 and an apology, a public apology from Kobe Bryant. That doesn't settle it. You know, if it's really that big a deal to you, why would you settle? You know, um, emotionally, this is a scar that never goes away. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll it, like PTSD, it'll come back at some point in some way, it'll be triggered by something. 
trigger warning. You know, um, so I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird how some people go about these situations, you know. My biggest problem with this whole thing is that, um, you know, we always hear, you know, people from Hollywood, musicians, yeah. actors, everybody, everyone in between, they're always complaining about stuff like this, like sexual harassment and all these sick, horrible, perverted things. But what gets me the most is that they are the, they, they, they push, they push the stuff. Like, look at, look at pretty much any any movie out yeah. there now. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at some of these things, and, and what I was talking about earlier with, uh, in the other room, you know, about, like, you know, movies and some, you know, music genres, and, and, and just seeing how much it promotes um, disrespect to women in the way, but they still will listen to that music. They will still watch those movies. You know, and to me, it's kind of hypocritical. You know, everyone is treated as a, as a sex object. Yeah, and it's a shame because you can't turn on any news station, any TV station, even sports stations with commercials that they have, and everything's either becoming a political platform, mm-hmm. or it's just brainwashing our youth with sexual content that's making them think they have to dress a certain way, think a certain way, act a certain way. And they adopt those um, ideals into their life when they're young, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. And then that just becomes the norm, you know. And to the point where right now in society is that you have very, very young women that, you know, that should be, you know, studying, you know, enjoying time with their friends. And they're, they're, they're going after boys. Yeah. That, that's, that's all what they think about. Yeah, and very young, pre-high school. Mm-hmm. You know, all this stuff is going on. Um, but who's to blame for that? Hollywood. You know, Hollywood and all these companies that make so much money off of these ads, off of these movies, off of these articles, off of these posters, these, you know, it's the advertisements. It's unbelievable what you see in society coming from... You know, coming from L.A., coming from Hollywood, you know, and then, it's crazy. <laughs> and then when they get treated in a very bad, perverted way, then they, they point fingers at each other. Yeah. And, and Instead of taking accountability. Yeah. Because they want to make money any way possible, but when it comes to bite them back, they point the finger at someone else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I would say, you know, any parents out there, you know, when you're watching television, honestly, like... Even parental censorship, the settings you have on your television or on YouTube or whatever. There's no supervision. There's no supervision. And you guys have to make that good for your kids. Mm-hmm. Because I've already met people here, you know, that um, are really like... I, I People I'm, last people yesterday that I've seen, you know, they just have the opportunity to be, to be such great people. Such great figures in, in society. And they choose down the path of what people tell them to be like. They choose to go down that path to act a certain way so that they they feel like they fit in. They feel like they're a part of society and that they can, you know, thrive on that, on those ideals. And you can't, it's just a grave that you're digging. Because when you get older, it, it's kind of like what my buddy was telling me about, you know, people, you know, drinking and, you know, doing whatever you want, partying, that's fine. But there's a point where it's just immature, and it and it should stop, you know. And you should get into that point of adulthood. Some people never grow up, and they never do. And you could see people at forty five, fifty years old still, you know, at the bar at twelve p.m. When I work you at know? Walgreens, I get people, you know, <laughs> they're they're still living in the seventies. I mean, they yeah. went to Woodstock and they never left. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're yeah. just drinking their lives away. And you could see what you know, people. Everything gets promoted. And then they act like that's their lifestyle, you know. Mm-hmm. They act like this is how it's got to be. And I'm not saying, you know, don't have fun. I'm saying, you know, you have to be balance, cautious. Balance yeah. your work, your fun, your yeah. social life. And it sounds like, you know, preaching to the choir, but it's just, it's an important ideal that people overlook. Mm-hmm. Because they think that life is just a, a, a merry-go-round. It's a, it's a... 
giant octopus. And, uh, yeah, giant octopus. Octopi. Or is it cacti? Like cactus, you can't say cactus, it's cacti. Mm-hmm. You know? It's a fungus, right? Um, we're going to take a break on that note. <laughs> we'll be right back here on the Adorable Deplorables on Lake Effect Radio. It's a local music spotlight here on Lake Effect Radio. Cattle Masserie. This is Lake Effect Radio. It's a local music spotlight on Lake Effect Radio. It's not sleeping, volatile. Hey, this is the Scenic Route. Check us out on Facebook, or on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TS Route. It's a local music spotlight on Lake Effect Radio with Adam Russell, alive and a- Lakeland Community College. Opportunity starts here. Earn your associate degree or technical certificate on your schedule. Convenient day, evening, weekend, and online classes are available at an affordable price. Visit lakelandcc.edu. Crest for the Mansion, Saturday, October 28th, from 9, p- 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Lakeland Community College Athletic and Fitness Center. Don't miss out on the largest craft fair in Lake County. Over 100 tables with accessories, candles, ceramics, and woodworking, and much, much more. Admission is $3 for adults. Children are under 12 are for free. Proceeds benefit the ongoing restorations and maintenance at the Moreland Mansion's Garden. So we recently, or earlier in the show, we mentioned uh, the new tax and health care that's going on in uh, with Donald Trump, with the administration. And everything was backed by uh, Senator Ron Paul from Kentucky, someone that Donald Trump was not too fond of during the uh, primaries. And here's what Rand Paul had to say about the... Uh, Tax care. Tax care? Wow. <laughs> Let's just put it together. The health care plan. Engine of the economy. Last I read, there were north of 66% in terms of creating jobs, those small businesses. So does this mean, Senator Paul, I'm going to put you on the spot, that you're now on the road if this issue should come back, uh, repeal and replace Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act? Are you on the road to being closer to supporting some sort of legislation that could move us away, farther away from Obamacare? Well, I always have been. I've been always for real repeal, and I voted every time real repeal came up. But when they started replacing it and putting up fake repeal that kept Obamacare in place, I wasn't for that. But the the last bill that came forward that I wasn't in favor of, Mm -hmm. I was in favor of four or five things. Expanding health savings accounts, that's freeing up the free market, allowing people to save more easily. Giving governors waivers, I was for that having some caps on entitlements so we don't spend ourselves into oblivion. Mm -hmm. Several of the things I was for, the only thing I wasn't for was keeping the Obamacare spending and then just block granting it and calling it a day. I still want to repeal the Obamacare spending. I also want to repeal the Obamacare taxes. So I think as Obamacare gets worse over the next six months or a year until this is revisited, I think maybe you're going to see some new Republicans. There's Republican challengers all over the country. You're going to see some new Republicans but you're also going to see maybe the Republicans that are in Washington are going to go home and feel like, you know what, people are upset with me because I didn't keep my word. Right. I kept my word. I've always voted for repeal and always will. I want to get to taxes now. Uh, just quickly, though, yes or no, are you comfortable with the president using his executive pen to get you where you are today? You know, I think that if the president is like me, wants to cut everybody's taxes, I'm all in. All right. I'm still a little concerned that the package we have doesn't cut the middle class taxes and so I'm still working with the White House, willing to work with them, and I predict in the end we're going to get this bill fixed where I can be all in on it. Uh, all right. I think we jumped to tax care, but I was still talking about health care. Uh, are you comfortable with the president using his executive pen today as he did? You know, Barack Obama did it north of 45 times to tweak or well, delay portions the difference of, is, the, of the difference is pres- The difference is President Obama created programs by executive action. This is just legalizing a freedom that's in the First Amendment. Got you it. have the you have the right of assembly in the First Amendment. You have the right to form an association. The NAACP versus Alabama back in the 50s ensured that right. So we do have the right to organize. The government was preventing it. So anytime the president, by executive can action, by executive action can undo a government mandate. By mm-hmm. all means, I'm for it. All right, now let's jump back to taxes if we can. Uh, I understand you're undecided on both the budget and the tax plan. Uh, that the president has put forth. You feel like it doesn't do enough for the middle class. Talk to me. 
Well, the middle rate's 25%. We're going to lower the upper rate from 39 to 20, from 39 to 35. We're going to expand the standard deduction at the bottom for those who are poor. I'm concerned about those in the middle. Are we going to raise their taxes? Right now, the plan keeps the middle rate the same, 25, mm -hmm. but gets rid of two big deductions, the ability to deduct your state income tax and the ability to have personal exemptions. I'm fine if you want to get rid of those, but you got to do something to make sure their taxes don't go up for those in the middle. Uh. I've talked to the White House. I think the president, he says he agrees completely with me. Mm -hmm. So he's told his people he doesn't want to raise taxes on the middle class. As long as the final product does not raise taxes on the middle class, I'm all in and I'm an enthusiastic supporter, but I'm going to read the details and I'm going to try to make sure that the middle class gets a tax cut also. So I think that's pretty important, a middle class tax cut. I think that was um, one of the main things in Donald Trump's campaign is he wanted a tax cut for the middle class. Um, that's really important mm -hmm. that people of our stature, you know, we have some sort of tax breaks. Um, you know, you give them to the top and somewhat the trickle down theory and other theory, you know, everything just doesn't work. Everybody needs to get the same uh, pretty similar amount of tax breaks. Mm -hmm. What do you think on that? Yeah, the, the more people keep of their paychecks, the more circulation in the economy. Yeah. I think that's that's important, you know, keeping as much money as, you know, if you earn your money, you should be able to keep it, mm -hmm. or a vast majority of it. And that's been, you know, really big on the Republicans for this, well, even, even the administration, for taxes to be cut. Um, so what else did you want to talk about today? We have some other news, Josh, coming from your side. There's, there's a lot of interesting, interesting things coming out of Canada. Um, s Toronto schools bans the word chief as offensive. And we also, we also got Justin Trudeau. I'm raising my kids to be feminists to fight Canada's culture of sexism. Yeah, I feel like Canada's just going to crap. It's probably going to hell. Like, honestly, with Trudeau in office, like, I I respect Trudeau. I really do. But a lot of his just policies are complete and utter garbage. You know, a lot of things that Canada has really um, put into place, or at least what they want to do now with this Trudeau administration... It's just, it's crazy, you know, just some of the things that, basically Trudeau ran on the, uh, on the platform that he was going to make marijuana legal. And then as he was talking about that, he said, this is going to be my main thing. Well, he wins, right? That's what the people wanted. And so that happens. And then he gets to parliament, the Canadian parliament, and they say, well, we don't want this to happen. Well, I tried. Justin Trudeau. That's his, uh... That's his words on what he was running for. So here's some of the uh, ethics of Trudeau. Wanted to take time to talk about good old Trudeau. And, uh, here's some of his ethics from his ethics committee. As you're looking it up, Josh. We want to let you know that this, uh, the Adorable Deplorables are brought to you by Lux Hookah Lounge. Lux Hookah Lounge, located in Willoughby. Willoughby, not Willoughby. On Vine Street, very close to downtown Willoughby, right next to the Jehovah Witness Hall on Vine Street. Very also close to formerly Skelly's, now the Garage Bar. Uh, very close to that. And also brought to you by Cameo Jewelers. Cameo Jewelers... Um, Make sure to check out Cameo Jewelers. So here is... Uh, so the opposition of Justin Trudeau, back on May 12, 2017, this year, from Canada Broadcasting, from the Canadian Broadcasting Company, <laughs> here's what they... Uh, here was an interesting argument from Candace Bergen, a house leader of the official opposition of... Justin Trudeau, and here was his response. Here's what they had to say. The question is not if he is happy 
or satisfied or feeling good about meeting the Ethics Commissioner. Has the Prime Minister met with the Ethics Commissioner? And if so, how many times? Very, very soon. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, I am pleased to work with the Ethics Commissioner uh, uh, and Congo Committee's Commissioner uh, to answer any questions she may have. That's what Canadians expect of the Prime Minister, and that's exactly what I'm doing. This Prime Minister said he would stand up every Wednesday and answer every question that's being asked of every member on this side of the House, and he fails to do it. He's been asked five times today, Mr. Speaker, about the Ethics Commissioner. For the sake of my colleagues, I'll ask it again. How many times? 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 And how many times has he met with the Ethics Commissioner? Canadians expect clarity. They expect consistently. And when asked the same question, I will give the same answer. That's what Canadians expect. How many times has the Prime Minister communicated with the Ethics Commissioner Answer the question. I will give the same answer. I am happy to work with the Ethics Commissioner on any questions uh, she may have. And one of the things that I like about uh, Prime I wish that we had that enthusiasm in the House of Representatives in the Senate. That'd be hilarious. Just watching C-SPAN and then you just see all this going There's on. There's so many things that happen in the Canadian Parliament where people are jumping over tables, over their and tables, and sitting on the throne and moving their legs. You know, I just think that Trudeau is the kind of guy that's just like an establishment politician. You know, tells you what you want to hear and then does something different. Very important to meet with the Ethics Committee. And he hasn't done so. And he ignored the question multiple times. You know, what does that tell you about Canada? You know? I mean, it just shows you what's going on with this administration in Canada. And, uh... <laughs> Let's, let's put that video on. This is a video of uh, Trudeau getting ignored by Trump at the G20 summit. There's there a video is. going around the web right now of Justin Trudeau of Canada walking into the G20 summit. And some people are describing it. It looks like he's walking into a house party where you don't know anybody. So I want to show this video and then break down what I think he did well and what I think he could do differently. So here's how it kicks off. He's walking in. You know, everyone's kind of already in conversations. It's clear he may have got there a little bit late, doesn't know anybody. Nobody's really turning to engage him. You can see the people with the badges in the back are the people that aren't leaders of different countries. There's Trump. He's already in a conversation with a couple people. Taking stuff out of his bag nice and slow. Looking around, trying, trying to get a little eye contact. You can see here, like right there, that's kind of casual. But even when you're the leader of a major country and, you know, he's got a lot of swag. People always talk about how he's good looking. He's like six foot two. He's a heartthrob and he's a leader. You still feel social pressure and he's feeling that social pressure. So he's st trying to stay a little looser. You can see he kind of throws that real casually down. You know, he's not setting it down. It's going to show he's nice and loose. He's not stifled by the social pressure. But you saw right back here, I think it was a little bit before, he looks over towards Trump and those guys just to see if he can get some eye contact. Because at that point, any of them would have looked at him, he would have likely jumped in to engage to start talking to somebody, but nobody did. And if while you're watching this, you're thinking, this is way over my head. I'm just trying to learn how to be normal in social situations and get a grasp for what's going on around me when I'm out, you can touch or click up here in the right-hand corner and download my free social invincibility checklist, which will get you dialed in, teach you about what to look for and how to feel comfortable when you're out in social situations. So he's taking his time. He's looking back again. Now, you see, when he oriented his shoulders over there, that, that gives Trump and those other two guys, I apologize, I don't know who those guys are, it gives them even a more impression that he wants to talk. So just by looking the first time is one thing, but when he kind of squares a little bit here and turns his whole head and body, it shows that he wants to engage. And Trump picks up on that, and so he points at him just to kind of acknowledge that he saw him there. And then he's immediately jumping in, right? So Trump comes over, he's out of there, tries to engage Trump, but he's gone. He's Swayze. So right here, he's talking, pats him on the back, but he's gone. Now, Trump hears him trying to engage again, tries to get him into a conversation. Trump comes back over, talks a little bit, engaging, but Trump still is looking like he wants to leave, right? So he's probably going to, yeah, he walks around and he leaves, and he sees he's leaving, now he's back to himself. So what could he do, right? 
First of all, he's talking as Trump leaves. That doesn't look too good either. He should have cut the conversation a bit before that. But right now, see this guy looking back at him right now, he knows those two guys that were in conversation with Trump now are just talking to themselves. So if I was him, he probably doesn't know who these guys are. If he does, he probably doesn't know him personally, I'm guessing, or he would have engaged him in conversation. But he could have just turned around and say anything. You know, just because you're the leader of a big country doesn't once again mean that you have to go in with some brilliant line. People are just making chat. If they don't know you, they don't expect you to come in with some high-level thing to say. Talk to them about the hotel. Tell them it's your first time here. Make a joke about it. Just something light. He could have easily turned to engage these guys right now. You can see they're looking around. They're more open. Gosh, Trudeau is Trudeau is great. Trudeau is hilarious. The, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau, I, I, I want to say I'm happy I'm living in America. I really am. I didn't do the Whoopi Goldberg thing and promise I was going to leave, you know, the United States if Trump won. Um, oh, by the way, has she left yet? I really hope so. Rizzi I don't think she has. Donald. I would have driven her to, the, to Canada myself. Um, you know, <laughs> I just think that's hilarious that... You know, you can see in the video, I know you guys can't really see it. We didn't really play it for you, but or we didn't really show you it. But Trudeau walks up to Trump. Trump points at him and says, hey, you know, I see you. Basically kind of the gesture of I acknowledge you're around me. And then just Trudeau has to work hard to get a conversation going. It seems like he's a socially awkward prime minister. You know, he's a very socially awkward man, afraid to engage in conversation. Because really, you know, dude, you're the Prime Minister of Canada. You know, I mean, okay. <laughs> That's what I hear. That's what I think of when I hear, oh, I'm the Prime Minister of Canada. You know, okay, cool, dude. Whatever. Nobody really goes there except to Niagara Falls. Um, but no, I love Canada. Canada's hilarious. Um yeah, it's a beautiful place. I actually, I went there when I was really little, and then I haven't been back since. Really? Because I really want to go there. I know drinking age is like 19, and everyone's like, oh, you know, I'm 19, I want to go to Canada to drink, and just do whatever I want. Cool, but that's not my mindset, you know? Toronto is a fun city. Toronto? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to go. I I was a big fan of the Phantom of the Opera, and or still I'm a big fan of the Phantom of the Opera, and I wanted to go see that in Toronto. I know that was mm -hmm. crazy expensive with the original cast. You know, that would have been awesome. But, I mean, I'm too young to have been able to see that. But that was one of my dreams when I was younger, to see that in Toronto. But never had the chance. I watched a couple Canadian uh, police shows. Really? Yeah, they were on a... Uh, what were they on? It was like a station out of Akron. And uh, they would... they Like Channel 10 or something on Spectrum or on Time Warner Cable. And it was just like... It was called Skyline or something line and it was about just the toronto police force and in everyday toronto and uh the metropolitan police was their name because it's a metropolitan city and you know it was just a good show really good show um spotlight skylight spotlight something like that good show really good show uh so what else is going on in the news as we have about 10 minutes left talking about Canada. So the largest school district in Canada, which is um, the Toronto District School Board, um, they, they've banned the term chief. Yeah. Because it's derogative to Aboriginal groups. So like native, the natives, like the Indians uh, in Toronto or in Canada? <laughs> Aboriginal groups. Yeah, so... Wow. Chief... It's just another, it's, just, it's, just, it's a word of authority. So if I go to Toronto right now and I see Trudeau and I say, hey, what's up, Chief? I'll get arrested. <laughs> Probably. This is great. Perry Bellag Pelligard, who holds the title National Chief. That's great. That would suck. So you got to change your nickname. Um, oh, man, that's crazy. Aboriginal. No results found. I could look it up here. So here's the correct defini definition of Aboriginal. Inhabiting or existing in a land from the earliest times or form of the arrival of colonists, indigenous, of human races, animals, and plants. <laughs> 
Great. That's great. So can so Canada is becoming the most politically correct country of them all. So you have you have a country right below Canada in the United States. That's like the country that's trying to become you know, it's trying to get like civil rights and, you know, certain rights and certain things passed, you know, more the liberal end. And then in Canada is just like, oh, we already did that. And look how it's turning out for us. Terrible. <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. It's crazy how Canada is just becoming a crap hole. Trudeau's you know? chief of staff is probably PC principal from South Park. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> PC principal. My favorite person in South Park other than uh, Tally. But <laughs> are you PC? Uh... God, that was loud. Are you PC, man? Yeah, man. PC Ohio State. PC Arizona State, man. Girl. <laughs> I want to get. I want to get a clip of PC principal here. Yeah, I love how everybody like tries to like troll me during the show, and it's like they only do it because they dis disagree with me and don't have like you know the actual brain to debate with me. So they got to like hack into my stuff. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. That's how I stopped that right there. <laughs> you know. You for the attempt. For the attempt. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So here's PC principal. <laughs> you shut him down like Milo Yiannopoulos. PC shuts. principal! This guy is amazing. Hold on, I'm gonna change the camera so you guys can see. This guy is fantastic. All right, listen up. My name is PC Principal. I don't know about you, but frankly, I'm sick of lies in today's society. A teacher who said women without wombs should. He said rooms. But, uh, uh, yeah, PC Principal's great. So, <laughs> just looking at him is just great. PC Ohio State, man. PC Arizona State, girl. I just love... See, South Park, you know, whether they're liberal or not, they're, they're just like... They come up with these great things to just show how stupid society really is becoming with just political correctness and just craziness. My good, friend, my good friend Dan Smith was showing me the... Uh the safe space episode with reality. <laughs> <laughs> You're violating my safe space, Josh. You need some reality. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I, I saw... Oh, man, I, I just... I don't get it. I really don't get how life is just becoming... It's so difficult just to be a person in society nowadays. To just live your life and not care. You know, you gotta go through... You gotta jump through hoops and jump over you know, fences and do so many crazy things just to be normal anymore, just to not care. You know, I mean, I can't talk the way I want to talk because then I'll, you know, be deemed a certain way. You know, I'll be told I'm a certain thing and I'm like, no, I just don't care. You know, I'm the type of person that if it doesn't affect me, I really don't care about it. You know, I really don't care what's going on. You know, someone wants to cry to me about something, go ahead and cry, but I'm not going to listen. I mean, I, I care to an extent. I'm not going to sit there and just make it my life. You know, that's what people want is they want, I don't know, they want sympathy and I don't want to give it to them, you know. It just, I don't care, you know. That's the whole thing about being a libertarian is like, when it infringes on my rights, then I'll care. You know, that's how I am. Josh, what about you? I'm just trying to get through school. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through school. I'm just trying to move on, get a job, and just live. Well, Josh, unfortunately, there's a lot of rules that you have to live by nowadays. I don't know. It's crazy. Well, it's not even the good rules. Yeah, not, not even, even the good ones. Rules. So I think we're going to wrap it up a little early today. Mm -hmm. you cool Sounds with that? good. Uh, next week, same time, the Adorable Deplorables here on Lake Effect Radio. Thank you for listening, everybody. Have a great day. Keep it classy.